everyone. This is a video tutorial to help you understand what an SN2 reaction is. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of break down each of the letters of the name. So S stands for substitution and N stands for nucleophile. So what that means is basically a nucleophile will be substituted out and replaced with a different nucleophile. So if you take a look over here, you'll see the substitution occurs where first X is part of the compound and now Y is part of the compound. So these two basically swapped roles. There's your substitution. And they're both nucleophilic in character, electronegative or electron withdrawing. So that's where the nucleophilic portion of the name comes in. The second part that I think often gets confused by people is the two. So two has nothing to do with how many steps are in the mechanism. What the two is talking about is the rate law, which is based on the rate limiting step of the mechanism. So over here, this two means that there's a bimolecular rate law, meaning in the slowest and only step of an SN2 reaction, there are two pieces contained in it. The concentration of the alkyl halide, this right here, and the concentration of the nucleophile right there. So there are two different compounds contained in the rate law for an SN2 mechanism. So please keep that in mind that the two is based on the rate law. It has nothing to do with the number of steps in the reaction. In an SN2 reaction, there is only one step. So let's take a look at that mechanism. Okay, let's take a look now at the SN2 mechanism. Remember that in the SN2 mechanism, everything happens in one step. So over here we have the nucleophile, which is hydroxide, and we have our alkyl halide. Now in an alkyl halide, there's going to be an issue of electrons not being shared equally. Because the bromine is more electronegative than the carbon, it's going to pull up the electrons, causing carbon to have a partially positive charge. That partially positive charge is very attractive to the hydroxide. So the hydroxide drawn in by that opposite charge will come and it'll attack the carbon. In that attack or the bond formation that will result from it, carbon would have five bonds formed. This is not going to be okay. Carbon will not exceed the octet. So that means a bond has to break. In this case here, the best bond to break would be the bond that it has with bromine. So what we're going to have is the hydroxide come and backside attack the carbon, which then results in the bromine getting kicked off. So you can kind of think of it in terms of if someone was on a bench and you wanted their spot, you shove them out of the way and steal their seat. This is basically what's happening in an SN2 mechanism. One thing that's very important to understand is if you have a carbon, like in this case, uh, that was asymmetric. So this carbon here is not an asymmetric center, but if that carbon was an asymmetric center, an SN2 attack would result in an inversion of configuration, meaning that if this was an R, which it's not, it would turn into an S. If it was an S, it would turn into an R. So in these reactions, you always want to start out by looking and seeing, okay, is this carbon an asymmetric center? In this case, you'd say, no, it's not. So you're not concerned with configuration of product. If, however, you were given an example where that carbon did have a starting configuration, you would then need to be mindful that the product has the opposite configuration to it. And that's what's going on in an SN2 mechanism.